In July 2016, a team of leading scientists, submersible pilots and technical divers came together in Bermuda. They were backed by more than 40 international organizations from the worlds of business, academia, NGOs and the governments of Canada and Bermuda. This alliance was assembled by an organization called Necton. Its objective, the XL Catlin Deep Ocean Survey, a groundbreaking mission to investigate the health of the ocean around Bermuda and the Northwest Atlantic. It's very easy to forget what's out there and what actually is driving our planet. And what drives our planet, our weather, our lives, is actually our oceans. So unless we know about our oceans, then we have no chance of being able to understand our own planet. The ocean is the world's most critical ecosystem, and yet it is the least understood. And we've forgotten about it, on, you know, and it's pretty obvious that we have because we've always treated this sort of like a dumping ground. You know, if you throw things in the ocean, it just disappears. We have better maps of the moon and Mars than we do of our own seabed. What people don't realise is this is the biggest ecosystem on Earth. Okay, it contains more than 90% of life on Earth and as with all ecosystems, it provides services for humankind and is an incredibly important part of the global Earth system. The lack of knowledge is partly because the ocean is a challenging place to work. A man can walk 200 feet up a hill and think nothing of it. But a diver venturing 200 feet underwater takes tremendous risks. So very few people ever go very far under the sea. So we've come to this extraordinary point in our progression and of human development where the most important part of our planet, the ocean, the deep ocean, is the least known to us. And we fundamentally need to go down there and explore and research and understand what is happening to us and happening to the ocean because it's going to affect us all. The big problem we have with understanding the deep ocean is we simply don't understand the distribution of life within it. The fastest way to change that situation is to develop a series of global ocean expeditions from 200 metres down to 2,000 metres. The XL Catlin Deep Ocean Survey measured physical, chemical and biological indicators to build a picture of the health and resilience of the deep ocean. Two research ships packed with cutting edge equipment worked in tandem. The CCGS Hudson, on loan from the Canadian government, carried out detailed survey work down to 12,000 feet on the high seas, departing from Halifax into the Sargasso Sea and then around Bermuda. Meanwhile, the baseline explorer worked multiple dive sites around the Bermuda platform using a groundbreaking combination of manned submersibles and volunteer dive teams. The overall mission director was Oliver Steeds. I didn't start out as a mission director of Necton. Five years ago, I was an investigative journalist and I was sent on an assignment to look at uh, uh, marine protection and the impact of trawling. And what I witnessed there changed the direction of my professional career. Uh, I saw the devastation that can happen from seabed trawling. And also, it was just, and it remains, so far off the radar. Necton's mission is to explore and research the deep ocean. And our scientific program, the XL Catlin Deep Ocean Survey, is the heart of our mission. So we're looking at chemical, physical and biological indicators of change so we can understand the health, the function and the resilience of the deep ocean. Robert Carmichael led the partnership with Project Baseline, a marine conservation initiative. Well, I, I kind of, I'm one of the sub-pilots and I, I organize the asset package, the subs and the ship and the, the dive team. And it's, it's something that me and a, a bunch of my highly motivated friends have been trying to put together for over a couple of decades. And this is the manifestation of our project. The linchpin of marine research in Bermuda was a pair of manned submersibles named Nemo and Nomad built by Triton Submarines and able to carry a crew of two safely to 1,000 feet. This kind of technology does not come cheap. The cost on uh, this particular submersible is around $2 million and uh, the bigger ones that we have, they're at about $3.5 million. So they're, they're not a cheap toy, but uh, we don't look at them as that. They're a, uh, they're a deep sea submersible. 
A perfect blend of advanced materials and innovative engineering, Nemo and Nomad are the ideal tools for scientists working in the deep. When I take a scientist diving in our spherical submarines, they uh, all of a sudden see the entire world in three dimensions that they've been studying in a lab. All of a sudden they're sitting in this sea environment and they see the marine life and the hard corals and the structure and the habitat all come together as a full story. For no one was this more important than the mission science director, Professor Alex Rogers from the University of Oxford. We're actually getting a view of the whole seascape rather than just a little picture of what's going on in, you know, a couple of feet by a couple of feet. Bermudian government scientist Chris Fluke was one of those lucky enough to dive in his country's home waters. And what a spectacular opportunity. I mean, I, I can't even put it into words. To be able to see that stuff with your own eyes and to see the mount as it is, to be able to go to that thousand foot depth and to see the transition of the different animals and the two habitats as you go through that layer, um, the, the fish you're seeing, and just to see it for your own eyes, it's, it's priceless. You can't put it into words. Other Bermudians were also integrally involved in the mission, including Dr. Robbie Smith, curator of the Natural History Museum, and the Honorable Cole Simons, MP. This kind of support, direction, and involvement from leading scientists and politicians in Bermuda was critical because the XL Catlin Deep Ocean Survey and Necton's wider mission is about more than just marine research. It's incredibly important that we work with people at uh, some of the local institutions here in Bermuda, such as the aquarium, and that's because um, we don't only want to achieve our wider goals as a mission, but we also want to feed locally into policy development and ocean management where we're actually carrying out our missions. Necton and the XL Catlin Deep Ocean Survey really is trying to find a new way to connect people with the deep ocean. And to do that, we think these submersibles are going to be uh, intrinsic to our storytelling. Because what's amazing about them is their pressure holes, their transparent pressure holes. And that enables us to witness people in the deep. And it's that point of human connection, I believe, which will help us fundamentally reconnect with the ocean. It's classic exploration, it's a marriage between um, proper science, exploration and, and adventure together. So you, you, you're sort of hitting all, all the key buttons and inspiring um, a new generation of kids who might want to go in to look at marine biology, zoology and scientific exploration themselves. Young people want to be astronauts. We want them to want to be aquanauts. And at the heart of our work is a large educational program called Submarine STEM. And that program is, uh, is focused on using these extraordinary submersibles that we have as a, as a starting point, an entry point, a way to excite young people. The other key component of the toolkit for the XL Catlin Deep Ocean Survey was a team of specialized divers, led by Dr. Todd Kincaid. Uh, well, on these dives, on an average, we're down for about five hours. So we ride underwater scooters. And so we'll, we'll drop down in the deep water, say we'll drop down to 90 meters, we'll do our work, and then we'll ride the scooters and follow the slope up shallow. Todd's team made grueling and sometimes life-threatening dives every day, which made it all the more remarkable that every one of the international team was a volunteer. If you, for whatever reason, made a direct ascent to the surface after spending you know, 50 minutes on the bottom at, at 300 feet, uh, yeah, you would, you would almost certainly die within minutes of, of hitting the surface. But the richness of Bermuda's reefs is ample reward for the risks taken by the dive teams. Personally, I think the most uh, impressive thing that we see is the, the slope itself. I mean, Bermuda is a volcano and we're diving on the flank of the volcano. The first thing that I noticed was that the, the, the coral reef um, looks very healthy compared to what I've seen and, and like I've certainly compared to Florida. Necton's work on the XL Catlin Deep Ocean Survey in Bermuda was just the first in a series of global missions to explore and understand the deep ocean. Bermuda was chosen to kick off these missions because of its wealth of largely unexplored complex marine habitats. We chose Bermuda because essentially within uh, a small area, we have seamount habitat, the slopes of the island, 
uh, we've got coral reefs in shallow water giving away to what we call mesophotic reef environments. It's where some of the surface animals come down to the depths and some where the deeper animals come up to the surface. So it's a really good place for us to understand about what's happening both up in our shallows and in our depths. Professor Rogers was thrilled to dive on one of the chain of extinct undersea volcanoes that soar out of the deep to create the Bermuda platform. I have a video here of Argus Bank. Um, so this is the summit, it's the top of Argus Bank, it's a, at about 60 or 70 metres, so that's probably about 200 feet. This was a big surprise for us. Uh, it's completely covered in a carpet of algae. Argus Bank is a name well known to Bermudians, but nobody knew what it actually looked like beneath the ocean's surface, because it had never been explored. What you can see here is this carpet of uh, an algae called Spirochnus. It's a brown algae. This is very unusual for a sea mail. There's probably something like 130,000 or more sea mails in the world's oceans. We've only looked at about 40 of them and not many of them have habitat like this. The water has to go up over this sea mail and around it, which means it accelerates. So these sea melts are typically exposed to very strong currents. Because we get these strong currents, in the deeper waters down uh, off the summit on the cliffs, we get really lush growths of corals, what we call coral forests or coral gardens. Gathering scientific data is all very well, but to be really meaningful, the research must deliver actionable knowledge to inform improved management. The first step is to establish a baseline of the ocean's health and function. That's why we're here, to get a sense of you know, what's here and then so that we can come back and be able to measure how that's changing. Our environments all across the globe are changing and we, and we don't have any baselines. We don't have anything to measure you know, that change against. And there is one critical issue for Bermuda that urgently requires a baseline. We've found lionfish all the way down to a thousand feet deep. So they're right down the slope of the Bermuda platform. Lionfish are a highly destructive predator, mistakenly introduced by humans, which spread across hundreds of miles of open ocean to infest Bermuda's waters. We've seen a lot of lionfish at very deep depths around Bermuda. Uh, which is very distressing to see. We filmed the deepest lionfish uh, known to Bermuda already, hundreds and hundreds of feet down. And it's quite simply Darwin's nightmare. It's an invasive species uh, which has been released, doesn't have natural predators here, and it's just, they're just eating their way through the food chain and devastating the, the marine life around it. So we need to find ways to control it. Lionfish are not the only example of human blundering in the deep sea. By destroying vast areas of seabed containing important marine habitats, trawl fishing is perhaps the pinnacle of human stupidity and ignorance about our oceans. Fortunately for Bermuda, the island's steep volcanic slopes have prevented this environmental catastrophe from happening here, another key factor in the choice of location for Necton's first mission. It's a very special habitat and also one that, you know, been preserved com compared to other places because of course trawl fishing has not taken place to uh, any great extent around Bermuda. This makes the island a site of key scientific importance. A glimpse of what a pristine deep ocean ecosystem would have looked like before significant human impact. Using the subs with Necton and stuff to be able to connect that area and that sort of you know part that's our home, it's Bermudian, it's ours, we should all understand it. But if Bermuda is valuable as a source of information about how the ocean works, it is still only a tiny dot in a vast ocean. The Excel Catalan Deep Ocean Survey is also taking steps to make sure that the data generated here can be useful in building a bigger picture of the world's ocean. At the moment, uh, there are scientists around the world who are doing extraordinary work 
to understand what's happening in the ocean, how it's changing um, and, uh, and its function and its resilience. But people are doing it in lots of different ways. So what we're doing under the umbrella of the XL Catlin Deep Ocean Survey is to create the first standardized methodology uh, in the world to understand the health of the deep ocean and how it connects to that surface layer as well. So what we've tried to do is ensure that there's a multidisciplinary approach so that we have people looking at the seabed. We've got people understanding the water chemistry and then there are other biologists like myself to understand what's living there and how many of those organisms are living in that environment. Good stuff. The XL Catlin Deep Ocean Survey racked up 450 deployments between the subs and the dive teams, brought back more than 40,000 samples and mapped 92 square miles of Bermuda seabed for the first time. Bermuda has been in the global spotlight with an international audience of over 700 million people hearing about the XL Catlin Deep Ocean Survey, thanks to coverage from the BBC, Forbes, PBS, The New Scientist, Huffington Post, and even 30 million people tuning in for the deepest live radio show ever broadcast. For like XL Catlin to be able to take on this challenge with Necton to say let's try and do these oceans sort of baseline surveys, and, you know, it's, it's a really groundbreaking way of looking at how we sort of, you know, study the oceans. To pull out together, I mean, that, that's a huge data set that I don't think Bermuda would have ever had the opportunity to get that. Um, so it's massive for Bermuda, but even more so on a world scale, it's huge for the oceans. Bermuda's landmass may be just 20 square miles, but the nation's territory stretches 200 miles in every direction. Its history and its future is intertwined with the ocean. The legacy of the XL Catlin Deep Ocean Survey will be to drive ongoing scientific research, along with public, business and political support to ensure a healthy ocean for generations to come. Mm -hmm.